Okay, we're starting with Maccabees 4, but I'm going to show you something just to kind of give a little intro. We've done Maccabees 1 through 3, so let's get started. Okay, so since we're starting a new video, I'll just read this real quick. We're on 4, but they threw out... Uh, first they came in, took over our country. Then they threw out all the holy objects from our sacred temple and brought in statues of their pagan gods. They wanted us to perform sacrifices to those pagan gods. Enough. This is how the Jews felt when the Greek rulers took over Palestine, Israel, 150 years before Jesus was born. The first book of Maccabees has stories of the evil rulers, rebellion and courage and war as it tells the story of Jewish resistance to the Greeks rulers. It focuses on family of Matthias and is named for his sons, the Maccabees. Judas Maccabees, the most famous Maccabee and the one who led much of the revolt against the Greeks. And then here's some headlines and we're going to start um, in four. So, um, who wrote the book? Unknown author sometime after 100 BC. Um, who are the central characters? Judas Maccabee, his brothers, John, Simon, Eleazar, and Jonathan. What time period? Covers from 175 to 134. Why was it written? Uh, it is written to emphasize the kingly and priestly authority of the Maccabees and to help the Israelites see that God used Maccabees to bring freedom to Israel. Uh, it's actually more than that from, well... Yeah, I guess that's it is. Uh, the, the important themes, God is absolutely um, reliable through all generations. Uh, it's not bloodlines uh, chooses who will serve and save his people. God, not bloodlines, choose who will serve and save his people. Okay, so let's get started on four. Excuse me. <laughs> um, okay, so... The Battle of Emmaus, 5,000 infantry and 1,000 cavalry moved by night to follow on the camp of the Jews. But Judas heard of it and moved his mighty men. And by the way, the reason I want to look at every detail is because there's just so much in these books. So please don't skip over anything. Just go through this series. It's a few hours. Believe me, I'm spending a lot more time than that um, trying to condense it for everybody, but not miss a point. Okay, so um, let's get back started. Um, but Judas heard of it, and he moved his mighty men out to attack the king's force in Emmaus. But the thousands came and found no one in the Jews' camp and exclaimed, These men are fleeing from us. At daybreak, Judas appeared with 3,000 men, but they did not have armor and swords. They saw the Gentiles strong and fortified, and these men were trained. But Judas said, do not fear their numbers or be afraid. Um, when they charge, remember how our fathers were saved at the Red Sea when Pharaoh with his forces pursued them. Now let us cry out to heaven to see whether he will favor us and remember his covenant with our fathers and crush this army before us today. Then the Gentiles will know there is one who redeems us and saves Israel. When the foreigners looked up and saw them coming, they went to battle and the Gentiles were crushed and fled. They fled their camps and the army of Judah plundered the camp and seized as much gold and silver and riches as they could. On their return, they sang hymns and praises to heaven for he is good his mercy endures forever thus israel had a great deliverance that day that was beautiful so there even though i'm just reading this there's just so much in here and it's very uh chock full of energy and just amazing action so and courage and just amazing courage that these men had um lesia lysias those foreigners who escaped went 
And this is the first campaign of Lysias. Those foreigners who escaped went and reported to Lysias all that had happened. Um, When he found out the men had been killed and ran for the hills and the camps had been plundered, he was discouraged for things had not happened to Israel as he intended, nor had they turned out or they turned out as God, as the king had commanded him. So the next year he came with 60,000 infantry, 5,000 cavalry men to subdue them. But Judas met him with 10,000 men. How about that? Um, He prayed for the Lord to fill them with cowardice and melt the boldness of their strength. Let them tremble in their destruction, destructive strike, strike them down with the sword. Both sides attacked and 5,000 of Lysias' army were killed. When Lysias saw the boldness that inspired Judas and how ready they were to live or die nobly, he departed to Antioch and enlisted mercenaries to invade um, again with an even larger army. Yeah, to invade Judea. So, the key event, cleansing the temple. In response to Antiochus, um, the fourth uh, persecution Um, a priestly Jewish family later known as the Maccabees rallies in Judah's defense Uh, vastly outnumbered nevertheless push the Greeks back win their independence and rededicate the temple Um, 164 BC the feast of Hanukkah commemorates their victory the purification of the temple okay so Um, In response to Antiochus, oh, I just read that. Okay, so cleansing the dedication of the temple. Um, Judas and his brothers went to cleanse the sanctuary and dedicate it. They assembled and went up to Mount Zion. It was desolate. It was desolate and um, the altar profaned and the gates were burned. Um, They also saw chambers of the priests were in ruins. Uh, They tore their clothes and mourned. They chose uh, blameless... Let me move this book over. They chose blameless priests and devoted, devoted to the law, and they cleansed the sanctuary of the damage. And they tore down and rebuilt a new altar. Then they finished the work, uh, and they celebrated the dedication of the new altar for eight days, which is now um, Hanukkah. Judas and his brothers were determined uh, that every year um, at that season, the days of the dedication of the altar should be observed with joy for eight days, known as Hanukkah today, that day. Um, They also fortified Mount Zion with high walls and strong towers to keep the Gentiles from coming as they had before. So that was interesting. I never knew that the Maccabees are why they celebrate um, Hanukkah. So it's an an interesting uh, understanding. Warring with neighboring peoples. When gen- the Gentiles heard that the altar had been built in the sanctuary and the sanctuary dedicated, um, it was as it was before, they became very angry. They were determined to destroy the descendants of Jacob who lived among them. So they began to, de- to kill and destroy among as many people as they could. They were fighting with um, many different groups uh, named one after uh, many different groups. Uh, um, one after another, um, the sons of Esau, sons of Bean, the Amorites, the Jazars. Um, but meanwhile, uh, they were seen as a force to be reckoned with, and they were winning every battle with the help of the Lord. There was much rejoicing. Um, liberation from the Galilean Jews. And now the Gentiles in Galilee gathered against Israel and planned to destroy them. But the Israelites fled to a stronghold and Judas sent and sent Judas and his brothers a letter. And the letter uh, is right in here um, and it tells them what's happening. Um, and uh, they ask for them to come and rescue them. So Judas and his brothers 
uh, took men, they chose men and they took, um, they took men and he and his men killed, um, 3000 and then eight, eight thousand, then he, then wait, let's see. 3000 men were assigned to Simon and in Galloway. Yeah. Um, so then he went and crushed more people. 3,000 of the Gentiles were killed. Um, Judas and Jonathan in Galilee. Judas and his army quickly took the city and killed every male uh, by the edge of the sword. And um, they, they seized all the spoils and burned it. Um, then they went to a stronghold. And the Jews were being attacked there, so they came up behind them. And when the army of Timothy realized it was the Maccabees, he fled before them, and 8,000 of them fell that day. They all died, 8,000. Um, next, he turned to Elima. He thought he fought and killed every male and plundered and burned it with fire. Whoops, did that turn? No. Okay. So, um, then he marched and took the other cities of Galid. They sent spy. They sent spies out to the camp to their enemies of the Gentiles, who hired Arabs to help them. Um, Judas and his army uh, defeated the Gentiles threw away their arms, and he took the city and burned the sacred precincts with fire and all who were in them. They returned to Jerusalem. When when um, Judas' men and his brothers uh, returned to Jerusalem, uh, they were greatly honored in all Israel and among the Gentiles, wherever their name was heard. Um, they, they gathered and praised them. They just big celebrations for them. They were greatly honored. Success at Hebron and Philista. Judas and his brother struck Hebron and its villages, tore down the strongholds, um, burned its towers, and some of the priests fell in battle, but they continued to the end uh, to the land of the Philistines and they tore down their altars and their graven images their, of their gods. They, he burned them with fire and he plundered the cities and returned to the land of Judah. The last days of Antioch. This is Maccabee 6. Uh, Antiochus uh, Epiphanes um, heard, uh, the, the king Antiochus heard Persia was wealthy and silver and gold, very rich. So he went and tried to plunder the city, but he couldn't. His plan um, became known, and the men uh, withstood him. So he fled with great grief and returned to Babylon. Um, someone came to them in Persia and reported that the armies who had gone into the land of Judah fled before um, the Jews because they had grown strong with arms and abundant spoils. Um, and have taken down many armies and also his city, Bethzar. Um, when the king heard the news, he was astounded and badly shaken. He took to his deathbed sick with grief. He called his friends and told them um, that he was dying. And um, he remembered the evils that he did in Jerusalem and he that he sent to destroy them without good reason. He knows this because of the evil that has come upon him. He called, you know, we should all think of that when some evil comes upon us, we should know we may have had something to do with that ourselves in our own sins. Um, that way we can repent and move forward clean. So not to blame ourselves, but to take responsibility, repent and move forward. So um, he knows this because of the evil that has come upon him. And he called for his friends to be made ruler uh, or his commanders to be made ruler and guide his son. Oh, his friend to guide his son Antiochus um, because he was young at the time. He needed someone to raise him at that time. Um, when uh, Lys Lysias 
heard the king was dead, he made his son king, and he brought him up and named the boy Jupiter. But we never hear that again, just right there. Um, Renewed attacks from Syria. Um, The men in the citadel were trying in every way to harm the Jews and strengthen the Gentiles, so Judas decided to destroy them. So that was good. Um, the king was enraged and the, when he found that out and he went back and it went back and forth, but finally the king and the king, um, and the governor Lysias proposed peace terms to the Jews and they accepted them. Um, but when the king entered the temple on Mount Zion and saw the strong fortifications, he broke his word and ordered the wall surrounding the temple to be torn down. Then when he left to return to Antioch, where he found Philip in control of the city, the king attacked the city and took it by force. So, um, I guess that's all this. Um, yeah, so that's where he heard that Philip took over. Okay, so seven. The expedition of Bacchides um, and the high priest Alcheman. Back guides and Alcheman. I, I actually looked up on YouTube how to say these names. Um, Demetrius left and went to a town on the Mediterranean coast where he proclaimed himself king. And um, he uh, began to reign. Um, and they seized King Antiochus and uh, Lysias to bring them. Wait a minute, let's see. The army seized Antiochus and Lysias to bring them to him. Um, and then he said, don't let me see their faces. So the army killed him, killed them. And Demetrius took a seat upon the throne of his kingdom. Then they came to him. Then all the lawful uh, and ungodly men of Israel came to him. They were all led by Alchemus, who wanted to be a high priest. They brought the king an accusation about Judas and his brothers destroying everyone. They wanted the king to send uh, a man to see the ruin. And uh, they say Judas had brought, had fought us and they want him punished and all who helped them. So. Um, so the king chose Bacchides. Let me see, am I here? Uh, so the king chose Bacchides, one of the king's friends um, and governor of a province. And he sent them, they, he sent them with ungodly uh, Al- Al- Alchemus, who he made a high priest. So a group of scribes appeared um, and Alchemus um, and Bacchides... Where are we? Before Alchemus and Bacchides. Okay. Okay, I'm sorry. I was getting I was getting um Antiochus. I'm like, but didn't they just kill them? So, um Okay. Um so they asked for terms and they said, "We're not there to injure them." So they trusted them. And um, he sees 60 of them and kills them all in one day. So he sees 60 of the men and them and killed them all wet, all, all in one day. Then fear and dread of them fell upon all the people. They say there was no truth or justice in them, and they violated the oath which they had just sworn. Yeah, so that's how they died. They seized all of them, and then they killed them. They fooled them and said, oh, we're not here to hurt you. I'm trying to change this page. Okay, so um, Bacchides departed 
uh, and left Alchemus in charge of the country. So they killed the 60 men, I guess. They hadn't killed them yet. Okay. Um, they killed the Antiochus. Um, so Bacchae uh, departed and left Alchemus in charge of the country, and Bacchae went back to the king. And all those who were troubling their people joined them, and they gained control of Judah and did great damage to Israel. Um, let me just clear it up. So the ones who died were uh, Antiochus and Lysias. That's who died. And uh, the ones that are working for him are Bacchides and Alchemus. Okay. Um, so Judas saw the evil that Alchemus and those with him had done among the sins of Israel much more than what the Gentiles had done. Yeah. Um, so Judas went out into the surrounding parts of Judea and took vengeance on the man who had deserted them. Um, when Al Alchemus saw Judas and those with him and the growing st and growing strong, he realized he could not withstand them. He returned to the king and brought wicked charges against them. Yeah. Okay. Um, Nicanor in Judea. The king sent Nicanor, one of his honored princes, who hated and detested Israel, and he commanded him to destroy the people. So Nicanor went to Jerusalem and sent a message to Judas and his brothers. Let there be no fighting between you and I. Let's meet face to face. But soon Judah found out Nicanor had other plans for his demise. So Judah refused to meet with him again. He went out to meet Judah in battle. About 500 men of the army of Nicanor fell and the rest fled to the city of David. Um, Nicanor threatens the temple. After these events, Nicanor went to Mount Zion um, uh, with some priests and elders came out to greet him. So he marked them, he mocked them, and he defiled them and spoke arrogantly and then then um, spoke arrogantly. Um, and then uh, he swore, let me see. He swore, um, unless Judas and his army are delivered into my hands this time, then um, I'll return safely. I'll burn up this house. Um, and he went out with great anger. Then the priests went in and stood before the altar of the temple, and they wept. Um, they prayed for God to take vengeance on this man and his army and let, and let them fall by the sword. The death of Nicanor, apparently God was listening. Uh, Judas camped with 3,000 men. Hold on. I got to adjust here. Um, and he prayed that God would crush the army of Nicanor before us today and let the rain and let the rest learn that he has spoken wickedly against your sanctuary and judge him according to his wickedness. And, um, the army of Nicanor was crushed and he himself was the first to fall in battle. So that was good. Let me put this book on here so it's not. Okay. So, um, let's see. So they all fell by the sword. Not even one was left. Um, when the Jews see the spoils of the plunder, they cut off Nicanor's head and right hand, which he so arrogantly stretched out and brought against them. So they cut off his head and his right hand. The people rejoiced and celebrated. They decreed that day should be celebrated every year on the 13th day of Adar. There we go with another month. Geez, what do we have, seven or eight now? Um, so the land of Judah had rest for a few days. Okay. The eulogy of the Romans. Now Judas heard uh, of the theme 
he had heard of the fame of the Romans, that they were very strong and were very friendly and loyal. So he was told of the wars among the Gauls and how they defeated them and the force um, to them and to how they forced them to pay tribute. And then um, what they did in Spain to get control of silver and gold mines there. And how they gained control of the whole region by their planning and patience. They also subdued kings who came uh, against them from all ends of the earth until they crushed them and inflicted great disaster upon them. And how they crushed anyone and defeated everyone who came against them. Yep, that's the Romans. Um, They had also defeated Antiochus the Great. They took him alive and said uh, who should reign after him and paid heavy tribute. Um, gave uh, hostages and surrendered some of the best lands. Also, the Greeks they conquered. They subdued kings far and near, and many have heard of their fame and feared them. Yet not one of them put a crown upon their head. I think are we over here? Yeah. Not one of them have put a crown upon their head or, or worn purple as a mark of pride. Um... They built for themselves a Senate chamber where 320 senators deliberate concerning the people to govern them well. They trust one man each year to rule over them and control all their land. They all hit, they all, um, they all heed the one man. There's no envy or jealousy among them. Wow, Rome had it together, right? Kind of like America. Um, that's where we got the foundations of it, I guess. An alliance with Rome. So Judas chose uh, Eupolemus, Eupolemus, John, and Jason, um, and sent them to Rome to establish a friendship and alliance. They entered the Senate and spoke as follows. It's all written in here how they spoke. Judas, who is also called Maccabees and his brothers and the people of the Jews, sent us to establish peace with you and be enrolled as your allies. And it goes a little bit further. They're allies and friends. They want to be. They're like, hey, these guys are winners and they're fair. So let's uh, become friends with them. Um, So they entered the Senate and they spoke... um, and they spoke, and um, so the proposal pleased uh, the Romans, and they wrote they wrote in reply on bronze tablets, and sent it to Jerusalem to remain there as a memorial of peace and alliance. Um, and the Jews said, if Rome went to war, they would join them as allies and fight for them. And they said the same way, if the war comes to the nation of the Jews, the Romans Romans will willingly act as their allies and fight for them. On these terms, the Romans made a treaty with the Jewish people, and they wrote to King Demetrius and said, Why have you... um, made made your yoke heavy upon our friends, the Jews, um, our friends and allies? And they ask us... And they ask to help against you. If they ask us to help against you, we will defend the rights and fight you on the sea and on land. So they're saying, look, we're going to stand up for the Jews. You know, that was the first time they actually have someone really helping them roam. So um, to help uh, bring in that. So finally, the Jews have a strong ally that are strong and loyal people. So uh, we're in Maccabees 9. Um, let's see. We're halfway through now. So let's end on this and start the next video on nine.